Hello again, fellow humans, this is Clay, and today I will be teaching you how to make THC-infused vegan gummy bears. The first thing you will need is some THC concentrate, or Green Dragon, which is decarbed cannabis extract in a food-grade alcohol solution. You can check out my other video on decarbing cannabis, which goes into the process for making Green Dragon and tinctures. You will also need a small blender, white sugar, optional cooking spray, some kind of concentrated fruit juice, agar agar flakes, a measuring cup, a metal saucepan, and a silicone spatula. For forming your gummies, you will require some small silicone candy molds. You may also want to use some food coloring. I like to pre-chill my mold, so throw that business in the freezer. Next, you will want to prepare your agar agar flakes, also known as Canton. Agar agar is a plant-derived gelatin substitute and has a few properties that lend itself particularly well to making cannabis gummies. In addition to being entirely vegan, it handles setting alcohol better than gelatin, has absolutely no flavor, and stands up to room temperatures when set, which is perfect for taking your gummies to the lake or camping. Since I will be setting approximately one cup of liquid, I would typically be using about two tablespoons of flakes. However, since I am setting a mixture that contains alcohol and has a high level of acidity, I'm going to use three tablespoons. This will result in a slightly firmer gummy, but we don't want to have to worry about them spontaneously melting or falling apart. You can also use powdered agar if it's available. It tends to set quite a bit more densely and consistently. If using flakes, you will need to grind them into a powder prior to use or you'll have itty bitty gritty gummies. A quick shake around in a small dry blender or coffee grinder will get us the light, powdery texture we are after. You will need to pick a juice or puree as the liquid component for your gummy recipe. Avoid choosing one that is really acidic, such as apple or lemon. You're going to need to measure out approximately six ounces of juice. Slightly more or slightly less won't throw off the recipe too much as you can bring up the total to an even cup when you add your green dragon. Next you're going to add two ounces of green dragon. This amount can vary by a half ounce or so depending on how strong you want your gummies to turn out, as long as the net total of liquid works out to one cup. When in doubt, test it out at a very low dosage and build from there. Next you'll want to start heating the liquids you're going to be using for your gummies. Turn your stove on to a medium high setting. What you're looking for is a very gentle simmer, but not so hot that you scorch your mix. You'll want to whisk this liquid continually the entire time the heat is on. Once you have reached your simmer is your opportunity to add additional sugar if you so choose. Keep in mind that a higher sugar content may affect the stability of the finished gummy. Once your sugar is completely dissolved and the mixture has reached an even simmer, it's time to add your green dragon. Don't be surprised if the color changes suddenly or if the mixture clouds, this is completely normal. Be extremely careful during this step. Obviously alcohol is extremely flammable in a concentrated form and you don't want this going sideways. Once your juice dragon mixture is combined, let it simmer for another minute or so and then turn the heat down low. It's now time to whisk in your agar agar powder. The trick is to have the mix retain enough heat to completely dissolve the powder without using any additional heat that could scorch your agar agar. This is the part that takes the most finesse, but after a couple of times you'll be a pro. You'll want to whisk your agar agar mix pretty aggressively to make sure you don't have any suspended powder. At this point, I usually shut the heat off completely. From here out, you'll want to work fairly quickly as the agar agar will begin setting the cooling liquid surprisingly fast. This is also your chance to add food coloring, whisking the mixture as you work. Keep adding drops till you hit a color you're happy with. The key is to keep your liquid moving constantly at this point because like the agar agar, the food coloring can scorch easily. Finally, you will add the mixture to your nicely chilled molds. There really is no science to this, just work fairly quickly adding a small amount of liquid to the center of the mold and working your way outwards. A small flat spatula, or flatula, will help make moving your mixture to the edge of the mold easier and allow you to move any excess to where it is needed. Toss your tray of filled molds in the fridge and let them chill for 45 minutes. Now it's time to demold your gummies. Start by sifting some cornstarch onto a tray, ideally over parchment paper, but all I had on hand was tin foil. This will act as a coating for your gummies and help keep them from sticking together. Roll your gummies in the cornstarch so they're evenly coated. As an optional final step, you can make your own homemade sour powder for your gummies using two tablespoons of cornstarch, one tablespoon of icing sugar, and half a teaspoon of citric acid. This will give you a moderately sour flavor, but keep in mind that citric acid is horrible for your teeth. Shake your gummies around in this mixture and they're ready to store. You can keep your gummies covered in the fridge for a few days or for several hours at room temperature. 
The gummies will remain stable at room temperature, but they may dry out slightly and shrink if left out for more than an afternoon. If you need to store them for longer periods of time, I recommend freezing them. They will keep in the freezer for a few months as long as they're stored well in an airtight container.